Bitcoin hitting its highest levels since May, ahead of El Salvador's official adoption of Bitcoin as legal currency. That starts today. The move makes it the first country in the world to officially put Bitcoin on its balance sheet and hold it in reserves. Here to break down uh, this test case, essentially, with us is CNBC's Mackenzie Sigalos. Mackenzie, great to have you on. I know you've been doing a lot of reporting uh, around this. But the fact that we did see Bitcoin jump ahead of this and now it's under a little bit of pressure today, I mean, this has in many ways been kind of the bull case uh, longer term around Bitcoin, the fact that you could actually use it to, to transact for everyday items, right? Right. And I think that that's one of the major things that people are looking for today on the ground in El Salvador. You know, citizens can now from today technically use Bitcoin to buy virtually anything. So we're talking a cup of coffee, a haircut. They can also pay their taxes in Bitcoin. And that's why you did see this price run up in the last few weeks. Like Bitcoin's price was touching highs that it hadn't seen since May. And then yesterday, the government announced that it was adding almost $21 million worth of Bitcoin to its balance sheet. And that's where you saw this, like, this huge bump up in the price. And yes, it has come off of those highs, but I think people are watching to see how rollout goes. And, and, and we're starting to see that. You know, from midnight, I was on the phone with people who were on the ground in San Salvador, and they were actively downloading the wallet that the government has offered to all citizens. So it's been really interesting to see it all happen in real time. <laughs> I, I realize we're essentially only hours into this rollout, but do we know from a, tech, from a technical standpoint how those downloads are, are going right now? Uh, and I ask that given the fact that, what, only about a third of Salvadorans actually use the Internet? Right. And, and, you know, that stat has been called into question just because it's referring okay. more to these wired lines, your fiber optics. But almost everybody has a cell phone in hand, and that's really the level of connectivity that you need to be a part of this Bitcoin economy. And in terms of how successful the rollout has been so far, so, I mean, was this a flip that switched at midnight? No, it wasn't. But, you know, people were actively communicating with one another. Uh, the president was helping to troubleshoot IT issues. And so at around 2 a.m., that's when we first saw the wallet go live. And it's something called the Chivo wallet, which is Salvadoran slang for cool. And so the government is, is really pushing people to become a part of this economy. And the way that they're doing that is by saying that everyone who signs up for this wallet gets $30. And, I mean, that's no small sum. Um, in a country where, you know, the average minimum wage is $365. And so from 2 a.m., it hasn't been a totally smooth rollout, but we have seen successful downloads. We have seen people receiving that $30 into their wallet. Mackenzie, from people who are, you know, intently watching this from the kind of Bitcoin camp, let's say, the people who really believe in it, what would represent success, either in terms of volume of transactions or, you know, just the adoption or displacement of other types of payments? What are we what are, what are our benchmark indicators? I mean, you said a few of them there. I mean, I think mainstream adoption, I, I think that one side of this, you know, going beyond using Bitcoin as, as a currency, as a form of, you know, exchanging, exchanging value, people see it as a way to, to help uh, Salvadorans save money. And, you know, it's a largely unbanked population. And so this gives them a way to build this culture around saving money. And, and I think that that's one thing that a lot of crypto insiders have, well, Bitcoin insiders, because this is really a Bitcoin project. And what Bitcoin insiders have spoken to me about is that they're excited about moving people from this government wallet, which is custodial, to their own wallet, where they hold the private key and they have 100 percent ownership over their wealth. And that's, you know, that's something that a lot of these people have haven't experienced before, and I think that that's what they're most excited about. Mackenzie, El Salvador has been looked at as a test case for a while. Are people talking about which country might be next? You know, Panama was watching, but I think I think that a lot of countries are, are keeping an eye on how things play out in El Salvador. And, you know, not everybody is happy about it. The IMF and the World Bank have, have expressed concerns about what this rollout means. So I, I think that there are a lot of people on, on either side. You know, there are a lot of big supporters, but, you know, you have a large portion of the population that also is, is confused about what this Bitcoin rollout means. They're inherently skeptical. So there are quite a few barriers to entry. So it'll be very telling how this plays out in the next few weeks, in the next few months, as we, as we get a better sense of what means stream adoption really looks like.